Hey, well, we finally made it to episode number 10 of the electric motorhome. And thanks for watching, and you've seen some of the trials and challenges that we've had. But it's going forward, and every day it's getting better. So let's go ahead and see what else we've been doing. And the next challenge was to get out the in-house battery, which was well <laughs> jammed in here inside a box and clamps and trying to get the clamps undone well i tried the clutch and the clutch didn't work so i fixed the brakes and now i've had to send back to england to pick up this clutch cylinder clutch master cylinder it's a hydraulic clutch system unusual there's that master clutch cylinder which goes here to the slave cylinder so i was able to Bleed this nipple and get clutch fluid, get with brake fluid actually into there. Uh, well Charlotte helped us bleed the brakes, and when she pressed the button, it pressed against this, which all seemed to work. I'm very happy. Yes, I just couldn't resist. If you've got an amp gauge, you have to have a volt gauge next to it. And what we'll do now is we'll put a shunt across these meters so that most of the power is going through the shunt and not the meter. And here is our instrument cluster installed back in the motorhome. Doesn't look too bad there actually. Doesn't look too bad. And I've also installed an on off switch for the disconnect for the VFD to turn it on and off which is this guy here, so when you turn that on, the light over there comes on to let us know that we have energy. Off, on. As you can see, we've got the old uh, back rack welded and I've started to paint it. And then we'll try it out, mount it on and see how it looks. <laughs> And here is the rack on the back of the motorhome, complete with rear bumper. Then I'll run some wires out and we'll get some lights on this thing, for the number plate perhaps. Bumper with a rack. In the last episode I was putting cork on the roof of the motorhome. Well, it turns out about five minutes after I'd finished, we got a tremendous rainfall and hence all the cork pretty much washed off. And so now I've got two long lines <laughs> beside the motorhome. Fortunately, I got up and did it again. I'm covering the wall. Now that it's nice and dry, I'm covering up with this stuff called flex fill, which dries it, but it moves, it gives, you know. On the bottom of the wall, I cut out some polystyrene foam to the exact specifications <laughs> and uh, stuck it underneath the existing foam. That just looks good. Then, once you've got your carbon down, laid out on the spackling, then I put some newspaper over it just to smooth out any rough edges or abrupt edges. And then once this is all dried out, I'll give it another coat of flexible spackling and we'll paint it. Just for a low wattage heater in the area and that'll get the air circulating and let, that'll let this guy harden up a little bit. And then we can put another coat on. See, and everything's covered, the polystyrene foam on the bottoms covered with the newspaper and make a nice smooth transition into the wall. And over the weekend we had torrential rainstorms and guess what? We got some moisture coming in here. So much for my corking and sealing. So I'm going to get back out on the roof again if it's dry later on today and um, we'll reapply some cork. See, it's all the way in the corner there, and there's a bit up there. Mm. 
Now it's time to put the DC motor on the stand so I can give it a good clean down and check all the resistors, check the brushes, check the windings and paint it so it looks nice. Just let it down, let it down gently on the cradle. I'm going to test for continuity between the coils. We have two sets of coils here. These coils here goes from here through the wire and out here. This is called the series coil and this coil here is called the armature coil. And to test for continuity what I do is I take a multimeter, turn it on of course, and set the range to 200 ohms, that's resistance. So, if we have continuity through a coil, we should be able to read something close to zero here. We're going to 1.7, okay. So what I'll do here is, let's see if we've got continuity there. Yes, we have. Yes, three ohms there. And on this one, on the armature coil, we have continuity there too and there should not be continuity between the armature coil and the series coil here or the field coil and let's see no we don't and also from the armature coil to the brushes inside we should have continuity yes we've got continuity there now then what we do next is we put a jumper between this terminal and this terminal here Power from the battery will come from here, actually from the controller, but anyhow, we'll get our 48 volts coming in here, and the circuit will go from here, through the coil, into this terminal, and from this terminal, we'll jump it to that terminal, and we'll go through a coil here to this terminal. So the power goes through that. This is called a series motor. The way that you know that this is a series motor is it has markings. You've got D1. D2 written on that terminal and on here this terminal here we've got A1 A2 now a compound motor won't have those same markings so just a little information thing that I've learned and I'm sharing with you guys all right